folks, and joining me today on T and Friends Watch a Scary Movie is my good friend, and I'm so excited to finally have him on the show because he's been in pretty much every single watch party that we've done <laughs> since we've been doing our watch parties, and the guy keeps me fucking sane a lot of the times because we have the same exact kind of humor and it's dark and it's hilarious and he's a fantastic person. So excited to have him on the show. Folks, Mr. Eric Brady. Oh, me. I thought there was a third guest. I was like, this is a way too nice of an introduction. Where is this going? Well, Jesus is always with us, Eric. So there always is a third guest. <laughs> One love. One love. For, this is for Wes. <laughs> that, that's for Wes there, man. My man. Who right is there? I so I pointed out before we started recording that you got the scream merch set up. Mm. Who are the autographs on the ghost face mask? So I got Skeet Ulrich right here, um, who, funny enough, I actually am the one responsible for getting him to Denver Comic Con in its last incarnation before Fan Expo took over. Because in the last year of Denver Comic Con, I was begging my boss because I was the head of like uh, their comic, uh, head, head of their comic book uh, department with all their guests. But, mm -hmm. you know, my heart lies with all the celebrities and everything as well, too. And I begged my boss, like, look, can we please start getting some fucking horror guests? Like, horror guests are the one. Like, I know it's a family-friendly con, but let's get some, like, outside the box. And yeah, lucky yeah. for me, Ski Ulrich had been on Riverdale recently, and they were booking, like, a lot of Riverdale people. And one of my good friends, Congroy, who works with uh, Ari Lehman and Tony Todd and, uh, you know, Roger Jackson, of all people, as well, too. Um, he's like, yeah, man, here, here's his agent's info. Here's all you need to get him. He's a cool guy. We'll get him out there. And we got him out to Denver Comic Con. Dude was cool as hell, man. Still looks like he's freaking like in his mid twenties right now too, which is ridiculous. <laughs> like, know, I've seen dude, him recently, and he he looks good. He's held up. He has held. Oh, I up. saw him. There's something I saw him in pretty recently. I was like, oh, it's good to see Skeet around again. Yeah. So I was I worried right knowing here. your stories that when you were like, I was responsible for getting him there. It was gonna be like, I was his Uber driver. He asked <sighs> to go to one place. And I was like, no, man. I wish, man. Taking like you to Comic Con against your will. Ah, dude, it would it would have been dope. Like, if because if we got in, we were planning a little mini horror convention, but then everything that happened happened and a stupid pandemic and shit. And so that went down the drain. But it probably would have happened if the pandemic didn't go through. So fucking COVID strikes again, man. But uh Another they got day. Skeet there. That's Roger Jackson. And then I don't know who's on this last one. I gotta verify that, but it's either Matt Lillard or it is Wes Craven's signature. I haven't gone to actually verify it yet, but I'm going to have to because I have my certificate of authentic uh, authenticity somewhere. Um, so I'll get it get it at some point. But yeah, got my mask and then uh, finally got my little NECA. NECA? NECA? I don't know. Uh, the little screen toy. You so got to get, get the gold mask now from Stab 8. Really do, man. Oh, my God. Stab. Was it you who called out? I was talking to somebody when they had the trailer for Scream. Uh -huh. and it's got the, the chrome reflective mask with the fire in it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was either you or someone who's like, that's probably not even from Scream. It's probably from Stab. And it I might was. have said that, but I know online everybody was freaking out because it was like, oh, my God, what that, what's that going to be from and everything? And I was like, look, it's not like Ghostface in these movies is walking around with a bunch of different variations of the costume and shit. Like, it clearly was never going to be a part of the actual story you know it had yeah. to be in film um and but, uh, i mean there were some wild fan theories out before this came out about like i remember people being disappointed that the killer ends up not being Stu, and it's like yeah oh Stu dead man yeah let's Stu, hit that so Stu folks, dead forever ago. If, if you don't know what we're talking about scream five or scream just came out this week here uh, we're gonna let you know right now. We haven't said anything. I guess the stew thing's kind of a kind of a spoiler, but not spoiler. really. If you're, the if guy you're who smart. died 25 years ago is not yeah. in the movie. He's not. He's not alive. But there's gonna this is gonna be spoiler heavy. Do not watch this or listen to this if you have not seen Scream yet. Okay. I hate if you haven't. That. Go see it and then come yes. back. Spend your money, guys. I've it's, seen it twice. It's Friday afternoon. I've already seen it twice. Go see it. It's good. It's worth it. Do it. Give them your money, folks. I think I'm going a third to time tomorrow. Go again. I'm going to see this hopefully three or four times before it hits Paramount+. Plus. Give them your money. But stop listening. Go see it. Come back and check it out. Check this show out later because we are going to go into everything. And Eric, I want to start with what you just brought up there. Uh, before we start actually talking the story and our thoughts and everything, I want to hear, and we're going to discuss some of those theories that came out beforehand about Scream 5. And let's start with Stu, because we're there, because for some God knows what reason, I get it, 
Matt Lillard is fucking awesome. People love um, Matt Lillard. They he, he's, he's fantastic. A, he's a great guy. He, he's so great. And so I get the love that people have of wanting to bring him back. And then there's the Scream 2 theory because him and Nev Campbell were dating at the time and he's in the background at the, uh, at the, uh, the sorority party, fraternity party, sorority party. No, because they can't throw parties because we all learned that from Neighbors 2. So it was a fraternity party there. Yes, that is how I know that That's shit, right. Neighbors 2 is part of the Neighbors 2. Now. It, yep. is, it is a fact. Sororities cannot throw parties. I don't know how, but hey. Do you mean like they're not allowed to or they just suck? No, no. Like it, I, it's a thing. Like they okay. cannot throw parties. That makes, that's probably reason. like a good safety thing. That's, yeah. That's oh, hundred percent. hundred percent. And so if you don't know, go back, watch Scream 2 when they're all at the fraternity party right uh, before, during, and after when C, uh, Sarah Michelle Geller gets killed and Matt Lillard's in the background, blonde hair and everything. And people also thought that meant, well, then Stu's got to be alive. He's following them around. I want y'all to understand Billy and Stu never planned shit. Okay. That was Roman who planned it all for them and kind of pushed them into it. So the idea that Stu survived a TV on his face. Also like, this is not like a small, weird, it's not like the body was never found. Like this is a well-documented, there's books about it. There's eight movies about it in the world. Like if this one of the two killers was still alive, they would know. know. We would know. The FBI didn't lock him away like Hannibal Lecter. Like, all right, Stu, you're this infamous serial killer. We need your help right now. Like, what the fuck? Come on. Yeah. We need to work with the the secondary accomplice of the movie. It's like, no. No. Uh, The man you brought up the Roman thing. Yeah. I like that you and Canon now are like, yes, that is absolutely what happened in Scream 1 is it was all methodically thought out by the unknown step lost half brother. And you're like, come on. <sighs> and I've always been okay with that. Um, like with, the, with what they've done with Roman, like in Scream 3, because I felt, okay, that doesn't change too much because number one, Maureen Prescott kind of was a horrible person. Like she, she did fuck Billy's dad, and that's why Billy's dad left, and Cotton Weary's life got fucked because of her. But then, like, you add in all the shit with Roman, and that then it's like... real spooky when it just started moving. <laughs> you add in all the shit with Roman, and it's like, yeah, I'm okay with that, because Maureen has already always been kind of portrayed as this terrible person, and it actually goes with what they're saying in the first movie, like she walked around like she was Sharon Stone, because she was in Hollywood. She, she tried to be an actress and everything, yeah. so of course she walked around like Sharon Stone. So I never minded, minded the backing of that, but... Uh, Roman was nice, because like the, the big twist of the first screen was that there were two killers, and that was mm-hmm. like what threw you off the whole whodunit, and then since then there was always two killers, except Roman was just one, and what yep. was cool about that is the two killers always kind of fit two different needs to the story. Mm-hmm. One is like, they always kind of talk about as being the reason for the killer is like something tied to the past that's coming back to get you. Yep. Billy's mom had the history. Then or Billy's mom, in the first movie, Billy's mom is the reason for Billy. In the second movie, it's Billy's mom. In the fourth movie, it's the cousin. Mm-hmm. This movie will talk about whatever. But the other one is always just like, I just love right. movies and want to be famous and want to have like a better story. And like, that yep. was Matthew Lillard's reason. That was the other film student's reason, the second one. And you get to like Roman and it's like, he's the half brother who's mod, like, he's got the family tie and he is the director of the Sab franchise who needs the better stories. Like they put the two characters into one. It's like, that's yep. cool. that works. And I was talking, I think I was talking to our mutual friend, Tyler, Tyler Swift last night or Maltanero, whatever you want to call him. Um, <laughs> I was talking to Tyler last night about how, um, I, I'm, I think you know this, how originally there were two killers in Scream 3 and Angelina, the actress who was going to play uh, be the new Sydney instead of Tori Spelling, she was the other killer originally. Okay. Is that, oh, you didn't know that. I have not heard that, no. Yeah, that, that is actually, cool. that that is legitimate. That is a thing. Um, I do not remember all the details about it right now until I give you more on it, but Angelina was absolutely the other killer to the point that Scott Foley even still claims that he didn't know he was the killer until the end of the movie when they were shooting it it probably helps with like your performance throughout the movie because mm-hmm. i i could say going into this movie in the hallway at the the regal theaters and i'm not watching my nicole kidman thanking you for being going back to the movies <laughs> they had the 12 character posters for scream up yeah and i like i think like one trailer for this movie because i was like i don't need to know much it's, i'm gonna yep. go see it. i love scream and i looked at the 12 posters and i immediately was like that's one of the killers right there mm-hmm. that guy right just looking at the way he was posing on the posters like he's a killer yeah like why would they why would he pose like that's they someone sort of told him right away like don't do that face yeah and, and folks, we're, we're like, yeah like we're like we won't say it right this moment we're gonna get to it there because there's a very like 
what Eric's talking about, there's a very definitive clue that this person is not doing, ver- like compared to everybody else, this person on their poster is the only one doing that shit. So yeah, after you see the movie, if you're trying to be spoiler free, because we'll warn like, after you watch the movie, go back and look at the posters and you're like, I know exactly which one. Yeah, it was this guy right here. Yep. This person. Yeah. Oh, Why man. are you doing that? All right. So what? let's talk one more before we go into some other topics there. What other, were there any other outlandish theories or like plot points that people were just stuck on wanting to find out in this movie that were kind of in your mind that set you off that you were thinking about before you saw it? I don't think so. Like Stu was the only one I had heard heard about i like did not know any of these new characters because they're the trailers maybe this was a, this is maybe intentional or not but it was a good deception kind of oh yeah the trailers made me think this movie was all about like the legacy characters absolutely which, i having, love that i love that about this trailer and they they even said like because they released another trailer this week i was like same fucking trailer man and i'm okay with that because yeah you're right the the trailer would make you think that this movie is again dewey gale and sydney and it's not and we had already like because you got the original trilogy that all came out close together and then it was like a decade later we got the first requel to use a term that this movie used to describe yep. itself and yep. now 10 years after that we get another requel so we've kind of done this two attempts at this thing now of like the reboot sequel yeah and the and scream four was all bringing in her cousin and everything is the new sydney we thought yep like that movie still very much felt like it was sydney's movie with this new yeah. ensemble around her which is what all the scream movies are yeah Whereas and it's this like, one did actually feel like these are new characters with dewey and sydney showing up once in a while to do stuff yeah it's and it's like good scream, scream four didn't even have the right balance like i honestly felt Scream 4 was like 70, 30 vintage versus new characters, whereas yeah. Scream 5 was the, was the other way. It was like 70, 30, if not 80, 20 yeah, new especially versus Especially like Sydney specifically is like yeah. the least of the three that's in it. And it's like, that's good. Cause like, I, I think if these new characters, at least the, t- the two main protagonists, if they're going to get like their own trilogy or something, by the end of that, like, I don't want that last movie to have legacy characters at all. At all. Like, at I'm all. ready. They they started laying the groundwork with this one with the next one i think you got to have like one of your like sydney at some point in this franchise needs to have her i am going to take this for the team moment kind of yep. thing passing the torch yep which whether that's in the next one or the one after whenever but we'll then find like, out at some point going which is funny I, because I want to keep going now <laughs> hitting the new characters part i am going to bring up one theory here that everybody was stuck on so when screen four came out which um, we'll re- we'll give our rankings before we start talking the story of Scream 5 and everything too before we get there. But when Scream 4 came out, everybody a- after that movie came out was obsessed with two people in it. Jill, played by Emma Roberts, because Jill is fantastic. I, I really do enjoy Jill a lot, honestly. Crazy, batshit insane, and she's fantastic. And Alison Brie, baby. <laughs> just in general, not in the movie. They just, they just love Alison Brie. All right, I give you that. But the <laughs> other one is Kirby. Hayden. Hayden Panettiere, yeah. Her character was great in that. And everybody said, because that's how horror movies work. If you don't see that person dead, they're not dead. And so we didn't see Kirby dead. There was no taking Kirby's body to the morgue. There was no, I'm so sorry, Jill, about Kirby in the last like 20 minutes of the movie or anything, which meant that it's up in the air if she's actually in it. Now, Hayden Panettiere is not in this film, but Eric and I can confirm Kirby lives, folks. The mystery is over. Kirby lives during a part in the movie where they're doing a, like, basically a cinema sins on Stab 8 uh, <laughs> over in the related videos. The first video listed there is interview with Woodsboro survivor Kirby Reed. So she is alive, folks. The mystery is done. Now let's bring him back in. That's it. Let's get her Man, back now. Scream 4. Since we're talking about, like, how you mentioned Scream 3 had, like, the original ending with the two killers. Yeah. Scream 4 had such potential. I think it was originally the original ending before they tacked on the, oh, Sydney lived and she wins at yep. the end ending. Like, if they yeah. had the balls to go ahead with, like, no, her cousin killed her and is the new antagonist. Let's go. Like, I'm well, dead. funny you mentioned that because Kevin Williamson just did a uh, interview with a podcast on Bloody Disgusting where he talked about that ending and what the initial ideas for Scream 5 and 6 were supposed to be, which get this. Exactly what you said ends right there. Um, it, but here's the thing: Sydney still doesn't die though, so it still ends with it's up in the air. It's, the, yeah. it's them laying on the ground together next to each other. Exactly. And that's your cuts of black, and you're like, 
I now need to see the next one where Sydney wakes up in the hospital and it's like, it was her. And they're like, who? It was who? We haven't, where, where is she? Yep. And, like, and yeah. so the idea was, it's, uh, it's like a year or two later, Jill is in college uh, because she somehow didn't get found out. Like the lie went by there. Somebody knows that Jill is the killer back in Woodsboro and is killing people on her college campus. So it's ghost face versus ghost face. It's good ghost face versus new bad ghost face. And I like, that's fascinating. That's actually yeah. fascinating. The POV, like, cause we've always gotten some of the POV from the killer, obviously in these movies, but if our protagonist, so to speak in the movie is the killer itself, that is, that's kind of it, like, that's, amazing i i like that idea a lot i like what it's, we got with screen five but it's almost like dexter-esque of yep. like the person with the bad background is the protagonist being haunted over their bad background by other yep. bad people and you're like all right i now, guess i'm rooting for you because you're the star but like you're still a terrible human being the only thing that doesn't make sense is that he said somehow sydney is a professor at jill's college and it's like well it's convenient yeah, that's that's too convenient to get her in. But also like, so then where are we? Where's the actual ending of Scream 4 at? Because is it like she stabs Sydney, thinks Sydney's dead about this. Like, and then the mask comes off because it's not as enjoyable. Like, I don't think Jill would do it unless she was giving the reveal. You know, there's no point. There's no win if she doesn't do the reveal. So, yeah, I don't know. But that's what he was saying. So, all right, Aaron. I'm a- I was gonna say like the real ballsy thing, but I don't think it would fit in the character of Sydney then is that she would be then have been the ghost face that was doing it. Yep. And then you- uh, here we go, yes. Eric. So before we start talking story, give me your ranking of the Scream movies prior to seeing Scream Five. All right. I mean, Scream One. It's you always got to go with the original. It is always the best. Uh, I might go Scream Four as my number two. Then I wow. I like that one, and I like the new character. I thought they were needed at that point in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scream 2, I think I'd go next. I hated that for so long mm-hmm. because, and of rewatching it, I'm like, it's a good movie, except I still hate the fact that I feel like the reveal of the Billy's mother being the killer is unearned because mm. she's barely in that movie. And when she is, she's like using a different name and it felt so just like contrived to be like, by the way, that person in the background, it was like a very, like a psych episode on USA. I get it's that. Like, the, the the hot dog dealer they walked by in the first shot that's actually the killer you're like i don't care it just that's a, it's an svu trick basically first yeah. person they talked to, hey man did you see the rate nah man it was those black kids over there yeah Later the first the, shot of every show. law and order episode is them going thank you and walking out with the hot dog and it's like it, that was the killer that, right there it's like i thought didn't earn that okay so one four two one four three. two three none of them are bad they're all yeah. good okay see and for me i actually went two one three four because um two i just felt like it felt a lot scarier to me i felt that roger jackson especially because that's what makes a lot of it to me is how good roger jackson gets to do in the movie and everything Mm -hmm. and i thought he was a bit more menacing in the second one um for some reason it happening at college made it scarier to me than it did happening like just in somebody's town maybe because it felt more enclosed like it's a smaller a smaller area to cover than the whole town of Woodsboro. college kind of is just like a smaller community in a sense yeah this is literally that and i think also too that uh scream as good as it is if you actually go back and look at the body count not necessarily that it's low but only three kids technically die it's uh it's uh case uh what is it? uh drew barrymore, drew barrymore. stewart Stephen <laughs> orf and then tatum they're the only like the only three kids who actually die judging it by kid, the deaths and, of children. and the killers yeah and then the killers but then but yeah it, in two it's it's like nothing but college kids like a lot of adults die but hey, it's nothing uh, but college oh, kids what about oh, the, the cameraman oh, no, I'm just saying, my... <laughs> yeah. yeah but poor poor 40 out for uh for jo- uh, no kenny <laughs> yeah kenny joel was the second one now, the second man. cameraman who else? yep now um and the thing who is, has is the that, great who's the one with the uh when they're in like the lecture hall and there's the bloody like on the hand of looking through the glass that is yep. a great screen, oh my god right? that's one yeah, of the like best, looking like, for, for gail cases. in that sound room so so good that thing still creeps me out when i see that I, man ooh. and <laughs> i have an uncanny love for three just because it's the first one i got to see in theaters and i felt so cool getting to see a screen movie in theaters um I was like, this is all awesome. I don't care that Nev Campbell's not in the majority of the film or anything like that. It's funnier than all the other movies. But then also, like, after repeated watchings, I really do think it's scarier. That uh, There's a lot of scarier deaths in that one, too. When you think about the fact that Roman's behind it and some of the shit that he does, it's like, 
wow that's fucked up like that Ginny mccarthy death well like it's not particularly scary her death itself the scene to me is terrifying just because it's one of the only times where the killer is talking to somebody as themselves and then switches to the ghost face voice and i love that because the whole movie they got the voice box they can do anyone's voice you're like yeah. oh but you don't have to do it for roman you oh are roman. God. and that doesn't happen it has not like i'd have to go back and check but i don't believe in four or in five there was any point to where it was you're talking to this person mm. psych this is actually the kill or like you're talking to this person who is the killer and then psych they put on the ghost face voice you're not supposed to think as that person i think that's the only time that happened was the Ginny mccarthy death and i just stuck with me for whatever There's, reason there i'll i won't get specific right now until we get into spoilers there's a very similar thing that happens that as I watched this movie, I literally thought about you talking about that Roman thing because we had just rewatched those movies. And I was like, yeah. I wonder if they're doing that again. And they yep. were. And I was like, yeah. And I wasn't wrong. So I did point out uh, when we did our rewatch of Scream 3 on Sunday, I think it was, I said there was a clue that is also like a good, a good giveaway that Roman was behind it. And it's during the Ginny McCarthy death that the security guard pops into his office and says, Mr. Bridger looking for him. And I, I know the light was on. So he's just checking like the lighter room, but also... Like, I have to imagine that the only reason he's actually calling his name out is because Roman got there earlier and was waiting for Sarah to kill her. If so have seen Roman. Yep. So that just uh, stands out to me. But I like four. Four just for some reason doesn't click with me like the other ones. Do. I think it's great. They're all great, like you said. But four just for whatever reason doesn't click to me like the rest of them do, honestly. And I think okay. it's the way it was shot. Like, there's something weird looking about Scream 4. My, it like, it's not blurry, but it, it's like it's shiny. I don't know a better way to describe it, honestly. It just looks a little weird. It hmm. definitely, I mean, that is the, the trouble of coming back to something 10 years later is you have that, how much do we want? Like Dexter, since we just finished watching the all our new blood stuff also, yep. has the same thing of like, do you want it to feel different or do you want it to mm -hmm. feel nostalgic? And Dexter does that well, where they had those shots that go back to like Miami. And it's like, shot in different framing and different color saturation you're like now this looks like dexter to me again yeah but in that oh. case the rest of the time you're like i don't want it to look like that i want it to feel new mm -hmm. but i guess with scream you're like do you want it to feel new or you just want it to be scream do you want yeah. nostalgia or do you want a, a revitalization of this myth yep so scream five uh the story here obviously wes craven has passed away so our uh, our collective team what? here. That's um, what the four West at the end of the movie was. Ah, uh, yeah. That's... I thought they really liked that blonde kid in the movie. <laughs> They're like, man, Dylan it is weird. They named a character West, and then he's the end so of good. Trip, Get he him like now, four West, and it's like, what about everybody else who died? What the hell? That's not fair. Like, we can't just put it towards him now. <laughs> um, but Radio Silence, which consists of Tyler Gillette, um, uh, oh god, Tyler Gillette, uh, Gillette Matt uh, Bettinelli, Open, and James Vanderbilt were responsible for Ready or Not, a fantastic horror film really? that came out recently, are the ones responsible here for Scream 5, looking to carry this on from the legacy that Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson put together. And I, I oh, just didn't talk about like theories. I didn't see, this one talking about theories, but I saw like some interviews with them like a month ago mm -hmm. about like, you know, it's important to like kind of take things in a new direction and not just be the same. And I was like, I got a little worried like, oh no, they're like, they're going to try and do something a little too new. And it's like, yep. you don't do that with the fifth end franchise. And it's like, no, you guys, you guys are making a screen movie and you did it and you did it well. Yeah. I was so worried that it's like, so many people were like, they're not just going to do another slasher movie, comedy, meta horror. And it's like, yeah. that's screen. If you're not going to do that, mm -hmm. don't do that. And then yep. to even watch this movie and have characters talking about like, that's what stab is. Stab is meta slasher who done it. If you want elevated horror, go elsewhere. And like, thank you. Yep. And the fact that they directly addressed that because the story here is simple in this one, y'all. The Carpenter sisters, uh, one of uh, Tara and Sam, who I believe, is it Sam's the one in Woodsboro? Because Sam's the younger one, right? Yeah. So, no, wait. Tara's the younger one. Tara's the younger one. Tara's the younger one. Yeah. Tara is the one in the trailer in the opening scene. That's right. So Tara Carpenter currently lives in Woodsboro. She's viciously attacked by, uh, by a ghost face killer. Then her sister Sam is contacted, who rushes back to Woodsboro with her brother Richie to find out why Sam was attacked and solve the mystery of the new ghost face killer. Now, that eventually brings in our legacy characters of Dewey, Gail, Sydney, and Deputy Hicks. And we go from there. And we have to talk about that opening because... Yes. I, I used to like, 
all the openings are like really good and they serve their own purpose. Um, and it's hard some days, in my opinion, to like to rank those opening because I really do actually feel with the exception it might be of hard screen, to rank them, but it's not hard to pick that Drew Barrymore is the greatest opening first kill in horror. It's, it's like amazing Spring one and the final destination franchise are like the, yeah. the definitive, like, okay, this is how you start a film with the oh first kill. God. And it still sticks because it's so scary. And like, again, even being such like, I, I'm a fan of Scream 2 and that opening scared the shit out of me a little bit more because it's like all these people around this woman's getting murdered and nobody no knows happened. what's happening. Like scares shit out of me. Scream 3 is great just because you feel so, like in my opinion, you should feel so bad for Cotton Weary because he got fucked by fucking somebody. That's all he did. <laughs> That's all he did. And he got fucked by that. And Scream 4 is fun. It's the bottom for me in terms of opening, yeah. though, just because it's too much fun. And Cream also, like, this doesn't work now for people going to see it for the first time. Yeah. But all the marketing for that movie being Drew Barrymore, Drew oh. Barrymore on the late night shows, Drew Barrymore on the posters, Woo! Drew Barrymore being the top billing. West and you go God. watch it and Drew Barrymore kills in 10 minutes. And you're like, what the fuck am I going to, what am I in for now? Bro, Wes Craven got him. He got up, he got us all with that shit, man. But like, even I'm like us, like, I went into that knowing that like, she's not in that movie. That didn't matter. And it's still, it's like, that added a whole extra cherry on top if you got to yeah. see it in the nineties. But even now, like that opening scene was just so good. And Scream 5, now that we're like, getting to this one, the opening of Scream 5 is basically the opening of Scream 1. It is the calling the girl in the house. But the great meta-ness of Scream, the first movie, Drew Barrymore gets called and it's the, you know, what's your favorite scary movie? Doing the trivia about Friday the 13th. Now it's trivia about Stab. Yeah. Bringing it full circle. And that lets you, if like, this is your first Scream, Guess it's a what? great like, oh, uh, who's the girl who survived the, oh, uh, that's, and it's like, you're mentioning Gail Weathers right away. You're mentioning Billy Lee. Right, we're going right to catch away. you like, up, right? We're giving you the story details screen. as she's scared and holding the knife and like, we're giving you the horror movie and the exposition at the same time. I loved it. And what got me is, and I, I've said this online there, is that we always talk about the original three, like the big three, Dewey, Gale, and Sydney. And I feel it sucks that Roger Jackson's never included in that because he should be a part of, it should really be a big four because he's as much a part of the franchise as the three of them. And I, I just said a little while ago that I love how, like how they get him to work and all these different scenes he gets to do across all the movies and stuff. This, that beginning of Scream 5 might honestly be my absolute favorite Roger Jackson interaction with characters across the series. Because the Drew Barrymore one, it's iconic, it's great. And going into it, you don't know. Like, we don't know yet that it, this is a killer, going to kill her and everything like that. Yeah. The fact like, that- it's, it's not until we get to the, I want to know who I'm looking at. And yeah. it still comes out innocent until she's like, what did you say? And, and he's like, I want to know who I'm talking to. And she's like, no. And it's like, no. And what makes this one scary is that um, we didn't. We don't really get normal, uh, normal Roger Jackson voice in two, three, or four. Like basically, anytime we hear his hear his voice in those three movies, we know it's the killer. It's menacing. That's the end of that one. In this one, it's normal Roger Jackson voice again, and we know it's the killer. We immediately yeah. the know. The second after. he's like, "Hello, is this?" and you're like, "I know." I, as the audience, all know who this is. And it's such a nice conversation, which is all the more sinister about it, is that you're waiting for it to turn. You know it's yeah. going to turn. And one thing they did better than any of the other movies is that they keep setting up those fake-ass jump scares. Okay, she opens the door. Oh, she walks by this. Oh, she looks at that one. Nothing. And they've used those tricks in the other films. Nothing. They keep fucking with your head. And, and when they, the conversation like, turns, oh and my And the conversation God. gets to work in those turn lines from the original, but not as the turns. Because oh. they're talking about sad. They're about how she likes horror movies, like the Duke. Yeah. Elevated horror, which I like them mentioning elevated horror because I saw an interview with Jason Blum recently about how he hates that term. Yep. Because he's like, that's just a critic's way to say they like the horror movie, but don't yep. want to sound like they like a horror movie. He's like, no, no, that's, mm -hmm. that's elevated horror. It's like, it's just horror. Because there's a problem with regular horror. Yeah, I can't just like hell. scream. I have to like these. But like, yeah. he's like, oh, what about Stab? And she's like, I don't really remember how that one started. And he's like, you know, the, the killer calls a girl and asks, what's her favorite scary movie? So, yeah. What's your favorite? And you're like, yes, Ugh. you get to do it again. 
And I, I just love the fact that that, that that that's real life, how meta this series is. But like, we're in the period where guys like me and you, we did grow up on Scream. Like Scream was like for a lot of people and they said it, like there was an interview that uh, Radio Silence did recently that said, you know, like Scream was what bonded them to horror. They saw like, you know, you see it at 10 years old. And that even in the movie, experience. they talk about that. They're like, there's the people who grew up. This was like their tenure when they're 10 year old. This was their entrance to horror. I'm like, that is absolutely me of like, yeah, being a, a child of 87. I would oh, go see horror God. movies at the video store and it was just like Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmares, all these 70s and 80s films. I was like, I don't want to see these. We got and Scream. Scream was like the first one that was like, here, this feels like a new horror film. Yeah. And that's, that's that's my nostalgia. We have these new kids who will never see those movies, who will never see yeah. Friday the 13th. They'll never like, see Halloween. They'll never see Nightmares. The same way that I saw those. I'm like Now I'm old enough that I'm going back to watching them. But when I was in high school, I was like, I don't want to watch Halloween. It looks old. It was stupid and lame. And it's all blurry 80s vision. Yeah. And the killer asked her, like, what do you think of Stab? And she's like, I think I saw it once. It's way too 90s for me. The yep. hairstyles and the whatever. And I'm just like, ah, too 90s? What are you talking about? But it's like, and, that was absolutely me. Like, this is 270s, this is 280s. I don't want to watch oh, this. Like, yeah. This is and I, I love the fact that we addressed the whole, the landline situation. Because even in Scream 4, that was a bit egregious for folks to still have landlines. So I do enjoy the fact we, that gets addressed over the movie that some folks still have landlines. And right from the jump, we can tell this is a different ghost face. This is a different Scream movie. It's a different ghost face because he is brutal. And just this first scene alone, it is the most brutal that Ghostface has been since murdering Casey Becker in the first scene of the first movie. 